The best way to improve your mixes is to improve your ability to listen. The better you are at listening, the better your mixes will be. In this video, I'll show you the most powerful method for training your ears for mixing. Although simply listening to great recordings is a very effective way to train your ears over time, the method I'll show you in this video will help you train them much more quickly. Jason Corey developed this system called technical ear training, and it was taught to me in one of my university classes. This system is described in detail in his book, Audio Production and Critical Listening, Technical Ear Training. I've put a link to that in the description, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Here's the premise. Each vowel sound in human speech correlates with a specific octave frequency. To demonstrate this, I'll play clips of filtered pink noise. Each filter will be centered on a specific frequency at plus 12 dB. The filters will be centered on the ISO standard third octave frequencies. For comparison's sake, I'll play flat, unfiltered pink noise and then add the filter to hear the difference. Let's start with 250 hertz. 250 hertz can be identified by an oo sound, as in food. Five hundred hertz can be identified by an O sound, as in no. One kilohertz can be identified by an ah sound, as in aha. Two kilohertz can be identified by an e eh sound, as in let. Four kilohertz can be identified by an E sound, as in B. As we move toward the higher frequencies, the vowel sounds begin to be replaced by sibilant sounds. Eight kilohertz can be identified by an S sound, as in Sam. Sixteen kilohertz can be identified by a sibilant sound as well. However, it takes on a sharper, more abrasive quality of tss, as in tsunami. After a bit of practice with these octave frequencies, we'll be able to move a little deeper and listen for the third octave frequencies between them. To do this, we'll utilize the same reference points we've created for the octave frequencies. We have already established an association for the sound U with 250 hertz and O with 500 hertz. 315 hertz is identified by two parts U, one part O. Four hundred is identified by one part U, two parts O. We've already established an association of the sound O with 500 hertz and A ah with 1 kilohertz. 630 hertz is identified by two parts O, one part A. Ah. Eight hundred hertz is identified by one part O, two parts A. Ah. We've already established an association of the sound A ah with one kilohertz and E eh with two kilohertz. One point two five kilohertz is identified by two parts A, ah, one part E. Eh. 1.6 kHz is identified by one part A, ah, two parts E. Eh. We've already established an association of the sound E eh with two kHz and E with four kHz. 2.5 kHz is identified by two parts E, eh, one part E. 3.15 kHz is identified by one part E, eh, 
two parts E. We've already established an association for the sound E with 4 kHz and S with 8 kHz. 5 kHz is identified by two parts E, one part S. Six point three kilohertz is identified by one part E, two parts S. We've already established an association of the sound S with eight kilohertz and S with sixteen kilohertz. Ten kilohertz is identified by two parts S and one part S. 12.5 kilohertz is identified by one part s, two parts s. The language we use to communicate about experiences of sound is very, very subjective. We use words like tinny, boomy, muddy, but these words really have no meaning. They leave far too much room for interpretation and miscommunication especially for professional settings. The tools we use in professional audio don't speak the subjective language of humans. As engineers, we need to learn to translate our subjective experience into objective terms so that we can use the tools available to us. Imagine how much more efficiently you could mix if instead of sweeping for frequencies, you could confidently identify frequencies that you hear. Practicing with filtered pink noise in this way is a great way to set your bearings to create reference points in your mind, but it's not at all realistic. In a real mixing situation, you don't get to compare flat to filtered. You need to listen and make the decisions based on what you hear. The single greatest tool for practicing ear training with this method is online for free at webtet.net. It's a software created by Jason Corey using his technical ear training system. With this online tool, you can use this method to practice with not only pink noise, but any audio file that you upload. The technical ear training system allows you to practice the method I described in this video. However, Corey's system takes this method even further. Not only will you be able to identify 12 dB filters, but you will eventually be able to identify up to three filters plus or minus 3, 6, 9, or 12 dB. This is no easy feat, but it's entirely possible using this tool. Jason Corey's book, Audio Production and Critical Listening, Technical Ear Training, goes into this system in much more detail. I've put a link to that book in the description, and I highly recommend you check it out. I hope you've gotten some value out of this video. If you did get value, click the like button for me, and consider subscribing to Audio University. With Audio University, you'll learn the fundamental tools and concepts of audio and how to apply them. Check out the blog at audiouniversityonline.com. Thanks for watching.